In this video, we're going to be reviewing the animals that make up the phylum Arthropoda. The phylum Arthropoda gets its name from two root words, arthro meaning jointed and pod meaning foot. And this is a distinguishing characteristic of the insects, spiders, millipedes, crustaceans, many, many different organisms to have jointed legs or feet. The general features of the phylum Arthropoda are one, they have a hardened exoskeleton surrounding their body. Two, jointed appendages that attach to the body. Fused and modified segments that make up the main body parts. Four, specialized respiratory structures. Five, an efficient nervous system with very complex sensory organs. And six, a division of labor that takes place over the entire life cycle of an animal. The hardened exoskeleton is made up of chitin, proteins, and waxes. It can be very hard like you would see on this lobster, or more delicate like you see on the cicada on the right. It provides support, especially on land, for the organism to move. In the center, this is a horseshoe crab that lives between an aquatic and a terrestrial life. So the shell, or the exoskeleton, is essential for giving it the support it needs for movement. And it also provides protection from predators, parasites, and various other environmental factors. The hardened exoskeleton also reduces water loss, particularly in the forms that live most, if not all, of their life on land. It's also essential in order to molt, in order to grow. This hardened exoskeleton could ultimately be a limiting factor, but by periodically shedding the exoskeleton, growing a new one in a larger size, these organisms are able to maintain this hard exoskeleton over the course of their life. In the center is a gif of a crab molting out of its shell and then eventually hardening and becoming a new larger exoskeleton. With a hard exoskeleton, ultimately this could be very limiting. But because they have jointed appendages, legs, wings, and so forth, they're able to move quite a bit. So jointed appendages allow for movement, they allow for muscles to anchor to the inside. And they're thinner at the cuticle at the joint. This allows for the flexibility and allows legs, arms, and wings to bend. Jointed appendages have become very specialized, including long, delicate legs for very fast movement, as well as wings. Antennae are also a form of an appendage. And you can see that on the right-hand side with this little beetle and its very segmented and jointed, flexible antennae. The arthropoda also have very modified and fused segments. They come in varying numbers and shapes depending on the particular type of arthropod. Specialized respiratory structures can be found on the body surface and sometimes internally. In this case, we're seeing some gill extensions of this small mole crab. Insects and some other land forms of arthropods have very complex structures. In this case, trachea and spiracles. Spiracles being small holes on the surface of the body, and then the tracheas are tubes that connect the surface to the internal body. If you look in the lower right, you can see a magnified version of those trachea and how they break into smaller and smaller tubes, bringing air to the internal body. Spiders even have a further adaptation called book lungs. And these book lungs that are in pink that you can see in the lower center of this spider anatomy are internal respiratory structures that allow them to more efficiently extract oxygen and get rid of CO2. The arthropoda also have very efficient and complex nervous and sensory systems. Eyes and antenna are highly evolved in many of the forms allowing them to detect very complex aspects of their environment. The arthropoda also have a complex division of labor over the course of their life cycle. This means that as they're surviving and growing, they can take on very different forms and do different things in their environment. You can see this monarch butterfly going from an egg to a caterpillar to the flying adult. It also means that the reproductive stage can be in different aspects of their life cycle. In this case, in the lower left, you can see termites, non-reproductive ones surrounding the queen termites that will be reproducing. 
In terms of evolution, the arthropoda are becoming more and more complex compared to the more simple forms that also inhabit the Earth. To look at some of the evolutionary features that they display that are advanced, they have bilateral symmetry, cephalization with a head structure, segmentation, a true body cavity, therefore they're called coelomates, and they have both tissues and organs. In terms of digestion and the type of gut, they have a complete gut ranging from the mouth all the way to the anus with different digestive structures in between. In terms of excretion, the aquatic forms mostly excrete ammonia as their nitrogenous waste through their gills, but land forms produce uric acid that they excrete through their anus. The circulatory system is open with a heart pumping. While some have arteries, most of the blood is just pumped and freely flows around the body. Here's an example of an arthropod with a heart. This is a Daphnia. It is a small crustacean that lives in freshwater ponds. They're scavengers and predators finding small planktonic food in order to consume. Importantly, they have a heart that is very visible as you look at it. In this case, you can see the gif where the heart is beating. The heart's located along the back, above the egg sac if you're looking at a female, and beats at a rapid rate. Here's a video of a Daphnia. You can see the jointed legs extending from the head region, the jointed legs inside the shell, the exoskeleton, and right along its back you can see the slowly beating heart. The rate will change depending on a variety of environmental factors including temperature. In terms of respiration, many of the landforms have spiracles and trachea that bring oxygen and gases to the internal body. The spiders have book lungs, and many of them also, especially the aquatic forms, have gills on their surface. The nervous system is comprised of ventral nerve cords with ganglia that run along the body. They can be seen here as the purple cord that runs along the ventral surface. Reproduction can be both sexual and asexual. The asexual form comes in the cloning that is found in various ants and bee species. In terms of an ecological role, they fill every kind of niche. They can be pollinators like the bee that you see in the lower left, herbivores, predators, parasites, scavengers. They can also be in a critical important part of any food web. The picture in the lower right that's the head of a needle. You can see that even these tiny, tiny planktonic arthropods are so small, yet are going to be so critical to many aquatic food webs. In terms of habitat, they're found in nearly every kind, land, marine, and freshwater. Now we're going to look at several of the subphyla that make up the major phylum, arthropoda. The first are, is the subphylum Chelicerata. The Chelicerata have two body sections, the abdomen and cephalothorax. The cephalothorax is kind of a combined head-chest region. They have no antennae, four pairs of legs, and a special type of leg called the chelicerae. And the chelicerae are pointed appendages that are used in feeding. They've been modified in the spiders to be hollow, and that's where they extrude their venom. They also have what are called pedipalps, and these leg-like mouth parts help move food into them for ingestion. And finally, some of them have a further specialized appendage called the spinnerets, and these allow the spiders to spin their webs. 
Another subphylum are the Myriapoda. One group of the Myriapoda are the Diplopoda, the millipedes. They have a round body, a segmented round body, two pairs of legs per segment, and they're also known as the Myriapods. Think of a myriad of legs, many, many legs. In fact, they can have thousands of feet. The other group are the Chilopoda, and the Chilopoda are the centipedes with a flattened body, a segmented body, one pair of legs per segment, and also they can be referred to as the myriapods and have maybe a hundred feet. The phylum Arthropoda also has a subphylum called the Crustacea. They have a particularly hard exoskeleton that's also flexible, and particularly at the joints. Given the type of movement that they have, this is an important feature. They have gills, which even in landforms must be kept very moist in order for there to be gas exchange. They have two pairs of antennae and two body sections, the abdomen and the cephalothorax, the combined head-chest region. And mostly they're aquatic, yet there are many landforms, particularly land crabs that are found, and isopods. One crustacea of particular interest are the triops. These are small tadpole shrimp that are found in freshwater ponds in dry, almost desert-like areas. They have a small egg which can dry out and last for many, many months with no water. Once the rains come, the egg hatches and the adult starts to form. They have a very rapid life cycle, of about two weeks, so they can go through their complete egg to adult, reproduce, producing new eggs, often in the time it takes for a pond to fill up and quickly dry up in dry desert areas. Another major group in the phylum Arthropoda is the class Insecta. They have three body sections, one pair of antennae, three pairs of legs, and mandibles. Mandibles are the jointed mouth parts that allow them to have very complex feeding. Finally, given the vast amount of arthropods on the planet, the variety of habitats that they live in, and the many niches that they fill, you can see that the phylum Arthropoda has been one of the most successful of all groups of living organisms on the planet Earth.